pipettes are devices used for measuring or transferring small volumes of liquid from one container to another with great precision and accuracy. Pipettes are widely used in clinical and research laboratories to supply very exact quantities of fluids. Types of precision pipettes can be classified based on mode of dispensing and mechanism of action. Based on dispensing, they are further divided into fixed volume pipettes or variable volume pipettes. The fixed volume pipettes are manufactured to dispense predetermined fixed volume of liquid. The variable volume pipettes allow adjustment of the volume dispensed within a determined range as specified. The volume adjustment is achieved by modifying the range of the piston's movement inside the plunger. Based on the delivery channels, they can also be classified as single channel pipettes or multi channel pipettes. Based on the mechanism of action, both fixed volume and variable volume pipettes can be subdivided into two types air displacement pipettes, positive displacement pipettes. In air displacement pipettes, there is a volume of air between the piston and the liquid. Air displacement pipettes have the advantage of presenting less risk of contamination. They are useful for general clinical lab use and aqueous solutions. However, they are not as precise as positive displacement pipettes when working with very small volumes, viscous or volatile liquids due to the compressibility of air. They present less risk of contamination, useful for general clinical laboratory use, but not good for viscous and volatile liquids. Positive displacement pipettes or direct displacement pipettes, here the piston is in direct contact with the liquid. They present higher risk of contamination, are more precise than air displacement, especially for small volumes, and can be used for viscous and volatile liquids. Most of the pipettes used in the clinical laboratory are the air displacement type. It is important to use disposable tips for minimizing risk of contamination and exclusively use tips provided by the manufacturer or compatible with the specific pipette to guarantee their correct adjustment to the pipette's body as well as volume dispensed. We will now describe the correct pipetting technique when using a mechanical air displacement pipet. The operator must take into account specific recommendations of the manufacturer. Phases of pipet use. The pipet plunger has three positions. Position A, which is the blank position, Position B, which is the first limit, and position C, which is the second limit. To proceed, place a new tip according to the pipette specification on the pipette tip holder. Avoid contaminating the tip with other substances. Ensure it fits well. To aspirate, press the plunger gently until it reaches the position B the first limit. Until this point, the tip of the pipette must not touch the liquid. Put the extremity of the tip into the liquid. Verify the recommended depth or use the recommendation provided by the manufacturer. Confirm that the pipette is in a vertical position. This process corresponds to the position 1B in the figure. Release the plunger gently for the pipette to aspirate the liquid. Verify that the plunger is completely released. Wait at least two seconds before removing the pipette's tip from the liquid. To release, place the pipette's tip against the wall of the receiving tube. Verify that the angle form between the pipette's tip and its wall is between 30 degrees to 45 degrees. 
dispense the contents of the pipit by pressing the plunger gently but firmly until reaching the first limit that is position 4B. At all times, maintain contact between the pipit tip and the wall of the receiving container. Gently slide the tip against the inside wall at 8 to 10 millimeters from the tube edge to ensure that there are no drops of liquid left on the pipet tip. Press the plunger gently until it reaches the second limit on the piston's path. This expels any fraction of liquid still in the pipet's tip by forcing out the air in the chamber through the tip. Keep the plunger pressed at the second limit while the pipet is removed from the receiving tube. Once the pipet is removed, gently release the plunger to the higher limit position or the blank position. Now discard the pipet's tip. To do this, press the expulsion mechanism button. Please note, if a variable volume pipet is used, the volume to be dispensed must first be selected. To do this, instructions indicated by the manufacturer must be followed. Normally, the volume controls are found in the upper part of the pipet. It is necessary that the operator understands and learns to differentiate the scales. Some important operational tips are Always read carefully the manufacturer's instruction regarding the use and care of a pipeter. When not in use, always store a pipette upright in a stand. Never leave a pipet on its side when tip is attached and contains fluid. Keep the pipet clean, particularly the nozzle. Every few months, depending on the usage, arrange for the pipet to be checked for accuracy and precision. Do not use a tip unless it forms a complete seal with the pipet. In variable volume pipettes, the volume set should be within the limits of operation. Otherwise, jamming of the piston can occur. Maintenance General outlines of the required routine maintenance for mechanical pipettes will be discussed in this section. Specific maintenance must be carried out on the different models according to the instruction or the user manual provided by the manufacturer. The daily maintenance Pipettes require frequent inspection in order to detect abnormal wear and tear or damage to verify that they are in good working condition. Inspect the pipettes to verify the integrity and adjustment of the mechanisms. These must move smoothly. Confirm that the tip holder is not displaying distortion or signs of being worn out as it is essential for the accuracy of measurements. Put on a tip and fill it with distilled water. The pipette must not show any leak. Every day, verify that the pipette is clean. If dirt is detected, it must be cleaned using a suitable solvent or a mild detergent solution. Sterilize the pipette according to the manufacturer's indication. Some pipettes can be sterilized in an autoclave using a cycle of 121 degrees centigrade for approximately 20 minutes. Some will need to be deassembled by a trained person for the vapor to come into contact with their internal components. If a pipette has been used with harmful substances, it must be completely decontaminated before it is used in other procedures or removed from the laboratory. Document the cleaning process. Specialized maintenance is done by trained personnel and as per the pipette model. A pipette used daily must be submitted to the following procedure to guarantee its correct functioning. Disassemble the pipette. Follow the procedure described by the manufacturer in the user manual. Normally, the main body of the pipet is disassembled from the tip ejector system, unscrewing the body of the pipet from the cylinder. 
clean the o-rings the plunger and the inside of the cylinder before lubricating if the o-rings or gaskets need to be changed replacement parts with the same characteristic as the original should be used the type of ring or gasket varies depending on the pipet brand type and model lubricate the plunger and piston with silicone grease specially developed for pipets always use the lubricant recommended by the manufacturer remove any excessive lubricant with absorbent paper assemble following the reverse process to that of the disassembly calibrate the pipet before use calibration of pipets pipets are precise and important basic instruments of the laboratory and they need to be calibrated once every year the calibration can be outsourced to a accredited laboratory and calibration should be traceable to npl the national physical laboratory if any deviation in accuracy is found the lab must decide if it is acceptable depending upon the area of use if accepted then the correction factor must be displayed on the pipette